conversations. Today we have developer Eric Winklespect. Welcome to the show, Eric. Hello, Kevin. Thank you for having me. No, man. Glad to have you. How you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah, so to start it off, man, can you give us a little bit of uh, your background and what made you want to get into coding? Ooh, okay. The Hitting with the big questions right off the bat. Um, I, uh, my background, so I, I'm a career changer, uh, was with a IT solutions provider for 11 years, uh, did a number of things with that company. If you want to talk about that, we can get into the details there. But um, over time, I just kind of found myself falling out of love with the work I was doing there, certain aspects of it, right? I have a number of years there that I was working as a manager or senior manager or like department leader and really enjoyed like being a coach and being a mentor and creative problem solving. But I don't know, shifts in the culture, things like that just kind of made me feel differently about where I was and didn't really feel like I wanted to spend the rest of my life there. Um, wanted to find a way, honestly, to work on different kinds of problems that I feel a little bit more passionately about, such as things like, you know, uh, for me, it's uh, environmental issues, climate change or renewable energies or sustainability, um, or even things like mental health and wellness. And, you know, my job was more along the lines of like, hey, if your company wants to roll out laptops to their employees, we help you roadmap that whole process and do that thing for you. Doesn't really directly translate to stuff I wanted to eventually try to get into. So I had some experience with software engineering, very, very limited. When I first went to college, I uh, was going for a computer science degree, quickly transitioned out of that into exercise science and physiology because at the time I was doing personal training, but started thinking about that again as I was kind of on my way out of my last career and um, really just fell back in love with it very quickly. Uh, realized that, you know, I've always been a very logical thinker with how I attack problems and really fueled by creative problem solving. And that kind of just meshes really well with software engineering and, and, and development. Um, so have been uh, fortunate enough to be able to leave that previous career and dedicate myself full time to the learning journey of moving over into software engineering. Excellent. Uh, how has your experience with uh, finding a job been so far? Uh, it is tough. It's it's very challenging. Um, I have gone through phases, I think. Like, you know, I did the self-taught thing, right? So like a lot of us, I've done some Udemy courses. And then right after the Udemy like, like boot camp course or whatever it is, you're like, cool, I know this stuff. I can go out and get a job. But um, I didn't start applying right away. I built some projects and then throughout those projects started doing the cold apply approach. So they're just sending out resumes. And at the time, when I first started doing that, my resume was really just like, hey, I'm learning this stuff. And here's all of my previous experience, right? Because that's what I had to lean on, really. And it's just, you know, rejection after rejection after rejection from sending out those resumes. Like, it's just a piece of paper, right? It's not a face or a personality or actual experience behind it, really. You look and kind of see the qualifications for the job you're applying to and what's listed on that paper. And if it's not a one-to-one -one relationship, most times you're just going to get passed right over. So I've realized that more as time has gone on. And I have been focusing much more on networking and trying to reach out and create conversations. And, you know, as you know, I've really spent a lot of time over the past, I don't know, few months, really, I think like since October, uh, maybe October, November in earnest, just more focused on LinkedIn and really putting myself out there and just showing what I'm doing and, and who I am and the things that I'm working on and what I'm learning and what I'm building. Uh, it's been a really encouraging process, finding the community on LinkedIn. You know, I still don't have like what I would say is a ready to go job prospect right now, but I've had a number of folks that have, you know, discovered me and said like, hey, either I have already recommended you or I plan to recommend you. Um, you know, a lot of companies that I'm aware of are still like going through their headcount processes now. But the fact that I'm getting some recommendations now is just far and away beyond what I expected at this point in time. I really expected to still have to be sending out, you know, resumes like crazy to get any kind of traction. So it's on an upswing. Like I feel like I've got that momentum and things are moving forward. Just taking a bit of time to get there. 
Yeah, man, that's uh, definitely how the process is for most developers, uh, putting in hundreds of applications, uh, you know, trying different techniques to get into the door. Um, you know, a lot, I know a lot of people feel discouraged. Uh, how, how do you keep your, you know, keep your spirits up when facing all that rejection? Oh, it's tough, man. It's, it's definitely discouraging. Um, there have for sure been days where I have felt so down about this process that I've sort of questioned if I should keep going with it. You know, I, I can, I think pretty confidently say I can go out and based on just the 11 years I spent at a previous company, use that and get a similar job somewhere doing something similar, but I don't really want that. And I want to be true to myself. You know, so that's one thing that I keep kind of going back to is like, what am I really doing this for? Am I doing this just to be a career changer and just to say I did it? No, I'm doing this really as a path to get to where I want to be and do something radically different with my life. And hopefully in the future, work on problems that I'm really, you know, just really passionate about and want to be a part of. And there's definitely, you know, those days where you have to look back and look at your own journey so far, right? And really sit yourself down and say like okay cool i know i'm good enough to do this thing because look at where i came from and not knowing how to do any single line of code and now today i can you know pick up a whole different framework or start learning like react native and it's not that big of a deal right like okay cool i'm capable of this stuff and the other thing has really been community you know, like, I'm glad I found community on LinkedIn, because if I was still doing this thing solo, like I was for the first large chunk of my learning journey, I don't know how well I'd hang in there, you know, because you see other people going through the same thing, and you can relate and you want to communicate on those things. And you have those conversations of just like, hey, I get how you're feeling. I feel that same way. Um, and, you know, it's, it's weird. I, I think a big thing I've been doing has been like just being vocal about those days and those feelings, right? Uh, posting about that on LinkedIn, which is a little, a little scary sometimes because some days I put those things up and I'm just like, this post is really for me. And just as a reminder to myself that like, I'm going to have these bad days and I want to talk myself through it. And I'm sure there are other people out there that need that kind of post that need to see it because I see other people's posts and I'm like, yeah, I needed this today. Uh, so it's a lot of a lot of different techniques that kind of all blend together. Yeah, man, uh, I would say don't get discouraged, man, because I've seen your portfolio. You definitely got the skills. Uh, it's just like the state of the industry. So what I had to do was uh, learn not to take the rejection personal. I remember yeah. back in the day, even when the market was uh, so-called hot, um, I had to put in countless applications, but I had to reprogram my mind and uh, make it into like a game. Like I'm going to get 10 failures today, you know, and aim know. for those failures yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and thank you for saying that man like i've i've spoken to a number of developers and, and folks in senior positions who give me like the same kind of feedback where they're like hey man i see what you're doing and you're good like you are job ready and that feels awesome to hear then i have the alternate side of things where like if i'm reaching out and cold applying i just get rejection so like i'm definitely at that phase where you know i'm still gonna send out applications in the cold apply method but it's definitely not my priority you know like my priority is more like let me continue building a network on linkedin let me continue to meet and have conversations with people and make those personal connections versus just send an yeah. uh, you know an application i'll be one of 300 people in the first 20 minutes that that thing is open right absolutely I, I see you've been kind of building a brand on linkedin you know posting videos of what you're doing uh, you got the podcast going can you tell us about that Sure. Um, it, it definitely started from a place of just me wanting to get practice um, for interviews. So, you know, doing the solo learning thing and kind of over time, like I definitely didn't know uh, what the process was of getting interviews and going through interviews, right? We're like, you know, some of it can be very intense. Some of them are just, hey, show us your project and let's talk about it. Some of them are take home things, right? But some of them are like code in front of me and solve these problems. So as I learned about that, I was like, oh, I really need to just get better at talking about what I'm doing and explaining my thought process and my, you know, what my problem solving out loud as I'm doing it. So I knew I had to build in public because I kept hearing build in public, learn in public, build in public. And I wasn't sure how to start. 
So um, I, I heard a lot of good things about people doing it through Twitch. So but that was my first attempt. I was like, let me go on Twitch. Let me do a live stream and let me just try to start this project. Um, I've done a lot of like front end mentor stuff. So I picked one of those projects and I was like, I'll just start streaming this thing. So I set up a Twitch account and I start streaming and a number of people were kind enough to join and start a conversation it was super cool. And then like at some point during that process, I hit a problem that I needed to Google something to look up and, and find a, you know, find a solution for it. And the streaming process just crushed my internet so hard that I couldn't Google anything. Nothing would show up. So then I was like, I can't do this. This, this isn't going to work for me because it's going to kill my productivity. I'm going to get stuck. I'm going to get frustrated. And it's just not the right answer for me. So then I was like, all right, well, let me, if I can't do this live, let me at least just record myself still doing it and put things up on YouTube. Um, so I started at that point just by doing like my own little code review stuff where I just kind of looked through and I was like, here's a thing I wrote and, you know, here's some of the, the lines I did and here's how it works. Um, I put up like a video or two on a previous project and I was like, that's cool. That's, that's fun. It's, it's working well enough. It gave me some experience with like just recording, speaking, editing, and, and putting things up online. And then uh, I came across a post on LinkedIn, which actually Matt's one of Matt's posts, my, my co-host on Self-Taught Devs. And he had said something like, basically making a comment about tutorials and things he had seen online where people would be like, oh, let's build Flappy Bird today. And they would just code like every single file straight from top to bottom, not hit any errors. They're clearly like looking off screen and you know retyping code they already did before. And his comment was basically like, hey, I don't like this because it's not super realistic on what the development process is actually like. And it creates like false expectations. And I'm reading that and I'm like, this is true. And it, it hit me and I was just like, yeah, I could just do this, right? I could just record myself doing the thing and making mistakes and talk about it as I'm going. And that's the practice I want, right? So then I just kind of started doing it. And I was like, let me just record these videos and put them up. And I don't know, I'm not out there trying to change the world or like really like create tutorials and stuff. I'm just, this is my project and watch me do it. If you want to watch me do it, cool. It's mainly for my own practice. And then as I started doing that, I was like, well, I need to, you know, you'll, you'll start reading things about being successful on YouTube. And I'm like, I don't expect to get like hundreds of thousands of followers, but I want it to look nice. I'm going to use this for my own resume, right? If I send something out to a company and I want them to see who I am, I want them to see that I'm doing this kind of thing. You know, it's going to play in my favor. So then I started kind of messing that up a little bit and saying like, how do I make this look good? If, what do I, you know, do I have an image of myself? How do I brand myself in this thing? And you start thinking about branding. And then I, you know, when I, as I was doing that, that's when I started posting a little bit more on LinkedIn. And then you start seeing like, oh, you should have all your images across all your social medias be the same exact thing and, you know, really create your personal brand and maybe have your, your color scheme and things like that. And then I just kind of started doing that. And just, it, I don't know, it all just kind of came sort of naturally. And uh, the podcast came about the same kind of way where Matt and I, you know, we had been chatting back and forth on LinkedIn. And then we basically just said, like, you know, we saw each other's YouTube videos. Matt was doing the same thing. And we were like, hey, we should, like, collaborate on something. That could be a fun little project for us to do. Just whatever. Let's just get together and, like, talk. That was basically our main goal. We we're like, let's just do a video that we'll put up on somebody's YouTube and we'll just talk to each other and just learn about each other and record our first conversation. That could be fun. And then we do it and we're like, that was really way more fun than I thought it was going to be. And we should just do this more often. And then we just had the idea. We're like, let's just make it a podcast and let's just start doing it every week. And we'll either talk about topics that as self-taught developers, both of us, we're struggling with that we think are good for people to listen to and get feedback on, or we'll interview people that are out there doing the things that we are trying to do and highlight those folks. Um, and now here we are, right? We're, we're doing the podcast every week. Um, I've slowed down a little bit on the YouTube stuff just because it's very time consuming and it's hard to do all of it. So I'm trying to establish different goals, right? Like I really wanted to do, you know, a, a code with me series where any project I'm doing, I'm recording in, um, and putting those up. And then I was also trying to do a documentation nation series, which I still really love the idea of, but it's just, I don't think super engaging at the end of the day. It was mainly for me going through and reading documentation and getting better at that process and also reading code and getting better at reading code. And it helped. Um, I still have some videos I need to edit and post, but like doing it helped a lot. 
And uh, I, I love the process of editing too, like video editing. That's just so much fun. So really all this stuff, I'm hoping I'm answering the question. It was all just, what's the fun thing I can do that's gonna help me show what I'm doing and show what I'm learning and put myself out there. How can I do something that's enjoyable that will be a benefit to me, maybe a benefit to others if they watch along with it and just keep on going with that and be creative and have fun. Absolutely. Um, Alexander asked a question. I can ask her first and then I'd like to get your opinion on it. He says, yeah. totally true. People say you're ready, but how do you show a company recruiter that you're ready? So I would say um, to this question, uh, we just have to be honest that most companies, they don't want to hire junior developers because in their mind, it's expensive to train them. And then once, you know, they get to a point where they're productive, they're probably going to jump to another company. So uh, what they want is somebody who can hit the ground running. Like you have to almost come in as a mid-level developer, but technically you're a junior, you know, like they kind of want somebody who already knows how to just kind of come into the code base and start contributing. And how you can show them you're ready is uh, just have projects that you're constantly working on. I would say freelancing is a good option for a lot of people. Like maybe a church needs a website or, you know, there's a lot of different people that need websites and, you know, it might not pay, pay a bunch, but you can literally use that as experience on your resume. You can say, Hey, I'm a consultant. I'm not a junior developer, so, you know, per se, I'm a consultant with like, a year two years of experience here's some of the projects i've worked on like you, you got to kind of use creative ways to get experience like uh, my co-host terrence um he was working at this company doing shopify you know like php that kind of stuff and uh in order for him to get his react skills up he had to pick up a, a unpaid react project outside of work and he kind of combined his management experience at his job with him actually doing react on a project outside of work to be able to package himself uh and get a you know get a lead you know lead dev job at his next job you know so you know you got to find like creative ways to get experience if the opportunity doesn't exist you create the opportunity like get some junior developers together say hey guys let's work on a project together you know and then you know, try to deploy it like that that also demonstrates that you have leadership skills as well so say so like we're in the age where there's so much saturation everybody wants in on the industry so you really have to be creative how about you uh, what would you say um how would you answer that question yeah i think i think everything you gave is great advice right you have to have the projects available that you can speak through in an intelligent way using the right terminology and using you know i i guess the right kind of show the right kind of understanding of your code right if you got a project that you put together how does somebody out there know that it's not just something you were Googling nonstop or, you know, following along with a tutorial? And do you really understand what that code is doing? I don't think I can say anything more specific about, you know, the code side of things. I think you covered a lot of it. I also think, though, that, like, what does it mean to be ready to work with a team, right, as a junior developer? You're not going to be doing the solo thing forever. You need to be teachable. You need to be humble. You can't go in there with an ego, right? You need to show that you are capable of learning. I, I think regardless of your background, if you did the boot camp thing, if you did the, you know, the CS degree, if you do self-taught, you show that you're capable of learning because you bring those skills. But what else do you already have besides coding that's going to show somebody that you are a good collaborative problem solver, right? Do you have previous experience in a different job? Do you have previous experience in a club from school or something where you were able to work with a team to accomplish a goal, right? Those things matter. It's not all just about your technical skill. That plays a big role into it, right? But it's also about how are you as a person to work with? How can you show that that personality that you bring, that that unique skill set or insight that you're going to bring to a problem that you're going to help solve with the team? And also, like, how reliable are you as an individual that you can show this person that, like, look, I am worthy of your investment in me coming into this opportunity. I am worthy of, you know, your trust that you can bring me onto this team and I'm going to actively put myself out there, not to just be the candidate that I'm showing you that I am now, 
but to be the person that I'm expecting myself to grow into on this team and develop my own skill sets. This definitely isn't an easy thing to do, right? But you can't just tell somebody straight up like, hey, trust me, I'm going to be really great on your team. I think it's the drive, right? How, how can you show somebody that you really want this thing and show that you are honest about where you are today? but focused on where you want to be and knowing how you can get there and having shown maybe like, have you already talked to seniors? Have you already gotten feedback from other folks that you put into your own day-to-day -day process, right? Talk about those things. Hey, I met with such and such developer at whatever company. He kind of been a little bit of a mentor to me. He gave me this kind of feedback and asked me to do this and this. So that's what I spent time doing over the past couple of months. And here's what I've learned from it. Those types of stories, I think, go a long way. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, speaking of uh, projects, can you tell us about some of the projects that you've actually worked on? <laughs> sure. Um, the first one that I did uh, was called Charge Buddy, which um, I, I did like the, the, the Udemy bootcamp horses, right? And I was like, cool, I'm ready. I, I've got this full stack thing down. I'm going to go make an application. And, you know, being interested in like the, the EV technologies, electric vehicle technologies, I made an application where it's, um, you know, it's basically just like a Google Maps app where you can put in your address and or, or pitch your like find me location and it'll show you it calls out to an external API, um, API and pulls in data that displays um, EV charging stations on the map. And then you can click on those stations, you can give them a rating, you can comment, whatever. Um, I, I'd use, you know, Bootstrap for that one. And it was fun to build because it really taught me a lot about all the front end stuff, all the back end stuff, really kind of solidified a lot of that knowledge I picked up doing the Udemy courses. And after I did that one, I was like, cool, all right, I got to keep building. What's next? And then I have an idea to do some application. I had some like drawings in a notebook and I'm like, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to map this thing out and really make it looking pretty. And then I sit down and I try to code something and I'm like, I don't have any idea how to really like make this look the way I want it to look without relying on something like Bootstrap. So then I ended up uh, doing a lot of research and finding front end mentor, which I really like as a resource to gain a lot of front end skills. Um, sort of doing those challenges to really brush up on like CSS and not just relying on a UI framework. Um, I did a number of those challenges. The ones that I'm really proud of. I did a lot of like the little components, like the junior level challenges that they have. Um, one of them that I'm really uh, proud of, one of the more advanced ones was the Connect4 application, mm. which uh, that was just super fun. And I had so much momentum as I went through that project because, uh, you know, I, I, I had done like a tic-tac-toe thing at some point through, through my, my learning. And I think at the time I did, it was just like a gigantic nested if statement with like all the different, like if there's a thing here, check these and going down an if statement that way. And I was like, I'm gonna do a connect four board. There's a lot more spaces there. And I really need to figure out a different way to handle that and understand how I'm gonna traverse that board and how do we know what values are there and how do I find winning pieces and things like that. Uh, I had been going through like some, some DSA learning at the time and I was really getting a better handle on like, you know, some of the algorithms of like, um, traversing different data structures, right? And that was just super fun for me to just have the idea of like, oh, okay, I'm going to make this thing an array of objects and we'll just kind of map through them and that'll lay out my whole board and each object's going to have, you know, whatever properties it has to display the value of the player and whatever else. But then I thought of the idea of like, oh, I can just um, have properties that point in different directions and have a function that I tell the direction we want to map through or go through and find the values of the pieces. And regardless, I'm getting in the weeds, but that was just super fun to go through. And it's like making a game, making a game was cool. Um, the most recent project that I did, the Kanban task tracker, um, that was a really fun one too, which I didn't do a whole full stack thing for that. I just did a, a front end for it. Um, really taught me a lot about working with deeply nested state in React right, about uh, immutability in state and how to handle that and different libraries that exist to also help you handle that rather than trying to go through and like, you know, use your use your uh, um, your spread syntax on every single level of your state to try to copy things over. Um, a lot of a lot of fun there. Um, 
mainly I've been working in React on a lot of my projects. Uh, I did opt to use Svelte on one of them, which was like an invoicing application. And uh, the experience of using Svelte was fun because it was just like, oh, I understand JavaScript and I understand React. And then hopping over to a different framework was very easy, surprisingly, at the time. I didn't really expect it to be. I thought it was going to be a lot harder for me. Um, so that one was a fun one to work on. And now I'm trying to learn React Native to, to build a whole new application, just mobile application for my next project, which will be a completely unique ground up, you know, custom application. So that's that's in process. Well, yeah, I looked at your projects, man. They seem like really advanced, uh, you know, something at least mid-level and above. So my advice, I don't know if you're doing this or not, but I would say stop marketing yourself as a junior developer and just put a React developer. <laughs> and uh you know sell your projects are literally your experience you know you can mm -hmm. talk about i did this project i learned x y and z you know because ultimately um companies they just want somebody to come in here and be able to run so um yeah do, do you write unit tests for your projects you know unit testing isn't something that i started doing until recently um sort of really diving into test driven development and did some coursework on that and man i, I fell in love with it immediately uh, that's going to be a, a huge focus of mine for this next application I'm going to build is using test-driven development for that process. It totally changed the way I think about attacking a problem when it comes to coding, right? So previously, like I'd accept the challenge and I'd say, this is the project I'm going to build and this is the functionality it needs to have. And I would have a general idea going into it of like, okay, I can do this, this, and this, and these are the things I know how to handle. So let's just start working. And I would dive in and start building stuff. and then. I would do, I don't know if there's a better term for it, but I would do a lot of what's called component hopping, where I'd build something in one component and then I'd go somewhere else and complete that functionality. And I kind of hop around solving the problems that come up as they come up. But then when I started learning test-driven development and seeing like, oh, I can just sit down and I can look at this one component in isolation and I can understand exactly what it should receive if it's accepting props or whatever, the kind of information it should receive, what it should be doing, it, how it should send data back out, and just focus on that one thing and understand all the requirements. And code this thing out in a way that's way more like isolated, like modular. Right? They call it modular and loosely coupled when you think about like test-driven mm -hmm. development stuff. And just looking at and understanding how that works just made me so much more excited about the next stuff I'm going to build because it's like, wow, I can do this in a way and, and write tests in a way that um, makes this so much easier to understand and work with and man it's just going to be a lot more fun to dive into i don't know if i lost kevin here oh no i'm still here though my ah, you got to off for whatever reason <laughs> the bad cool, man died, but... there he is there we go <laughs> okay but yeah man um yeah you, you know you, you really have a, a very in-depth knowledge of coding man i think um you know just me coming across the right person that's that's really going to be your key to to get in yeah. a job because you know, you know what you're doing. Uh, I really feel like you can come in and contribute to a team immediately. Um, so like, okay, here's some of the kind of questions they ask on the interview. Like, um, I just want to get your opinion on it. Okay, say there's a problem, you and another dev, uh, you're discussing on how to solve it. And, you know, you both have two different approaches. You kind of have a disagreement. So how would you go about resolving that so both you can get on the same page and uh, move mm -hmm. forward and pick a solution? It's, if we're speaking in broad strokes here, right? Like there's always gonna be disagreements on ways forward. And this is, you know, I, I have over 11 years of a previous career have solved numerous problems and have worked with a lot of people who are either super easy going and just want to hear your opinions on things and trust your judgment and want to go or have their own very strong opinions on how things need to be handled. And sometimes there's a middle ground that you find where you're able to say like, all right, we can take pieces of both of these solutions and make this thing work. Other times you need to kind of step back a little bit more and you need to work with that person in a way that is a little more conducive to their particular style. Right. Um, for me personally, like if I'm if I'm in this situation, I'm gonna believe that I'm the junior here, and I, I probably have the less the, the less of a tenure in this whole situation. I always look at anything as a learning experience, right? 
where, hey, I might have some ideas. I might have some preconceived notions on how I think this thing is supposed to go. And I want to understand why this other person has their ideas, right? I don't want to immediately discount what someone else is bringing to the table just because I think I have something that could work and probably maybe could work well, right? But what what is this person thinking about that's influencing their decision, right? I'm not going to jump to conclusions and think they're wrong. I want to ask those questions. I want them to teach me more about what their approach is here. Teach me more about how you're looking at this problem. Help me understand your perspective on this thing, right? We're not necessarily trying to find out who's right or who's wrong on this thing. Well, let's just have a deeper discussion about this problem overall, right? Give me your perspective. I want to learn. I want to look at different ways to attack this problem. And I don't want to already fall into this trap of like, hey, I've got a thing. Let's just work on this one thing and make this work, right? So, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't think there's like a best approach, but I'm always somebody that's looking to just be completely open and gain more feedback and gain more knowledge. And guess what? If we go and do something and it's not the right way, we're going to fail on that thing together, right? We're not going to come out of this problem and say like, oh, this person came up with this idea. So it's his fault now that we fall behind on this thing. We're going to make a decision on this together. We're going to agree on what we do moving forward. And if it's the wrong thing, okay, we made that decision together. Let's just remember that as a team here, this is our responsibility, not just your responsibility or mine. Yeah, absolutely, man. Great answer. Uh, Jason Kavnis asks, I know y'all are talking about how junior devs can find that first paying role, but let's reverse it. Can you talk about how a non-tech founder with limited funds can convince a junior to join his team? So, okay, what, what would make you want to join uh, a team where there's limited funds, like maybe like a side project or something? Mm. Uh, I think the first thing that jumps to my mind is the kind of work, right? How appealing is it? What kinds of problems would we be working on? right? If it's something that I personally connect with, yeah, I'd be excited about doing that. Even if it wasn't necessarily like the highest paying thing, or if there was like the opportunity to turn into something bigger in the future, if I could be a part of something that makes sense to me, was where I want to spend my time. Yeah, that's number one. I guess the other part is what, where is the benefit to me in this scenario, right? Like mm -hmm. if I'm, a, you know, I'm the in the position I'm in right now, where I'm trying to go through and find a full-time job, trying to find a paying role. Am I confident that this is going to turn into something that's really worth my time investment? Can I be funded in a way that's going to allow me to continue to live and survive while doing this thing? Or is this going to be a project for me that's going to be something for my portfolio, right? Can I take this thing and show other yep. potential employers that I had experience helping build this project? That's going to potentially turn into something else in the future that maybe I won't be involved in. Maybe this is just my minimal involvement in it up to this point because I need to use this thing as a stepping stone because it doesn't meet my criteria on a timeline as what's going to support me financially, but I still want to be involved. How am I going to benefit from this thing, right? What's, what's really going to be the reason to hook me in? Yep. Yeah, that definitely makes sense, man. Uh, you know, like I mentioned, my co-host, he kind of, uh, worked on a unpaid project to get experience in React. And I guess the, the big benefit for him was being around senior developers, learning how to code in a professional environment, you know, kind of go through the process of uh, committing your code, having to go through code review. You know, if they don't like it, they leave the comments, you know, pretty much a, a professional process. I'll say that would be the big advantage. But mm -hmm. uh, and like you mentioned, you, you can also put it on your resume for experience because, you know, even though it's not technically paid or paid a lot, that's still job experience. And I think that's the big uh, benefit is, uh, you know, companies want to see that you have some sort of job experience. But, yeah, I can also see, like, if you're not aligned with the mission or, you know, it's not, you know, you need to get paid now, then it might not make sense. But I would say, like, if it comes down to like just working on whatever your own project versus working on a project that's not necessarily paid, but it's with a company. I would lean towards that because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you literally have a company you could point to to say, Hey, I worked on this, come check it out. Like, you know, like, yeah, that's also one of the things I need to start looking for, right. Is like volunteer work, right. I had a conversation with somebody yeah. recently about that. And I think it's a really great idea to find like a volunteer organization or folks that do code for volunteer 
and work on something, right, with another team. And that is more experience, like you're saying, even though you're not getting paid for it, you're at that point a working developer, right? Working on a real world project with the team for whatever the you know problem might be, but it's more experience. Exactly. And you know, at the end of the day, that's really what companies are looking for. Can you demonstrate to me that you know how to come in here and get to work and you know uh they're not really looking at your previous salary like that they're just looking at what you did at the job um so yeah like going forward are you gonna change like you kind of mentioned you're more so networking can you talk about that like what, what are you doing exactly Whew, networking has been an evolution for me um and it's still trying to find out what you know how to split my days where my time is best spent but at the moment, networking for me, a lot of LinkedIn stuff, right? Primarily LinkedIn stuff. Trying to post as often as I can. I don't know that I'm one of those people that can post every single day, but I definitely try to post as many days as I can, just one time, right? I don't wanna go do like multiple posts a day. It just, just doesn't work for me. I don't have enough that I wanna say, but I'm trying my best to either talk about what I'm learning or what I'm building or how I'm feeling about the process, right? Because that people out there connect with that and you want to be, at least I want to be honest in, in how I'm feeling. And sometimes I need to write those personal reminders for myself. And that seems to be doing well um, with just people connecting and commenting and, and want, wanting to communicate and be involved in the conversation. Um, some people are finding value in the things I put out or learning things from the things I put out, which is awesome. I am doing my best to reach out to others, right, at companies that I'm interested in, where I would like to be a contributor, um, whether it's reaching out to someone at the developer role or the senior role or the hiring manager role. I have been enjoying generating those conversations and just hearing feedback from people that actually work at those companies. Um, it doesn't really do anything if you just start mass sending out connection requests without any kind of meaning behind mm -hmm. it. You can do that. For sure, you're going to have more connections, and that's okay, I guess, right? Maybe those people over time will start to see you and get more familiar with what you're doing. And that's cool. But if you make a bigger connection from the start, it's a lot, it provides a lot more benefit, right? Not, you know, I'm not just trying to connect with people just to have a network, but I'm trying to connect with people so I have opportunities to learn from others, to show people what I'm doing, to participate in that community. You know, I, I think. You know, if I could give one piece of advice as far as networking is concerned, it's do your networking for the right reasons and be as genuine as you can in that process, right? It's not really just about having the biggest network possible. It's about showing people who you are and reaching out to somebody with the purpose, right? Like, don't just reach out to a I think we lost them. Let's see. Hey, Eric, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Cut yeah. Back. yeah, just cut back. I cut Ooh. out a little bit, but okay. All right. Well, my, <laughs> my line of thought here was just like, I don't know. I see a lot of different advice out there as far as how you should network. Um, I don't think asking for a job is the right way to work with people, but I think asking for advice or feedback or a conversation is a better way to network with people. Um, whether that is just through LinkedIn chat or if they're willing to have a video call or whatever it might be, make that conversation because it's going to it's going to do a lot more for you in the long term. And, and look, look for those opportunities to learn from other people and not just try to get favors from folks out there. Yeah, absolutely. I know a lot of people, they kind of have social anxiety. I know uh, originally I used to have a lot of social anxiety. So how was how was your experiences actually like just messaging people, DMing them? Like I know a lot of people kind of imagine, oh, I'm gonna get a rude response, or you know. Yeah. Uh to the comment of social anxiety, man, I don't know. I've I've been mixed on that, right? Because at first reaching out, just cold reaching out to people and being like, hey, here's who I am and what I'm doing. Can we talk? It definitely was intimidating at first. Cause I didn't know what kind of response to expect, right? I wasn't really involved in this community. I didn't really see the kind of positivity that's out there. Um, even though I'm not a shy person, you know, I've 
like I, I've said at the top, like I had 11 year career and eight of those, eight plus of those was in different levels of management. And I've had very, you know, challenging conversations have to put myself out there, have to be a very big personality in a lot of situations. So like I'm comfortable speaking with people and generating conversations with those I don't know about. I had to interview tons of people and make connections with folks for the first time. So I've been fine with that aspect, but still just reaching out, sending a message to somebody and be like, hey, you have no idea who I am. Can you please give me 30 minutes of your time? Felt a little bit different, right? Because it was kind of like, for me, the tables were, were reversed here. It was, it was flipped around me reaching out to people and, and trying to ask for their time. Um, it's been a good experience though, right? Because like, I, I'm getting one of two responses. Either I don't get a response because maybe that person just isn't on LinkedIn very frequently. Or I get a response that's like, hey, yeah, cool. You can ask me questions. Go for it. And sometimes that turns into a call and sometimes that doesn't. And that's fine, right? But I never really get a response from anybody that's just, just like, hey, I'm too busy. Leave me alone. Yeah. No one ever comes back with like the jerk response, right? It seems like, and you know, give me your perspective on this too, Kevin. I'd love to hear it. But like anybody in this field, in the software engineering field, they all remember the struggle to get to where they are. Right. And I don't think there's anybody out there who's like, man, I wish I had less help doing this thing. You know, I don't think there's anybody out there who says, like, if I have a few minutes to give to somebody, then I'm just not going to do it because to hell with them, like, make, let them make their own way. There's not, I'm sure they exist, but there's not really too many of them out there in the community from what I've seen. Yeah, I think a, a big fear that we have is, uh, is mostly, it's mostly imaginary. Like, we kind of, think that oh, somebody's going to be rude, they're going to cuss us out or we're bothering them. But uh, I find like, especially a lot of seniors, they want to share their advice. Uh, you know, especially if the junior comes at them respectfully, like, hey, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Like, uh, as long as you're respectful and you just, you, you know, you're kind of direct, you're not wasting their time. I find most uh, most seniors or architects or whatever, they're open. They're, they, they really want to share their knowledge. They really want to help. And they really love seeing people who are diligent about progressing their career. Like, I think uh, really what helps is asking like targeted questions. Like, you've shown you've done your research on some things, and you preface your question with that. Like, um, I, you know, I was having such a, I'm having a problem with such and such. I've tried this out. Uh, what do you think about this issue? You know, kind of showcase that you're serious. You're not just like hitting them up and you know, spamming them with random questions, but you've done your research and, mm -hmm. you know, I find that they really uh, enjoy that. You, you know, like even with recruiters, um, if you have somebody that, you know, they send you a job listing and the template doesn't fully render, then you see the, the brackets and then first name, dash, last name, like, you know, they're just spamming your inbox with a template. You're going to mm -hmm. be like, eh, put this in the trash. Yeah. The, the other thing about, you know, just LinkedIn stuff that I like, you know, when you talk about reaching out to people and asking questions, you, you don't have to make those to specific people, right? The yeah. over time, as you build a network and you have more people that see the stuff that you do, right? You post more regularly, you're going to get some amount of people that connect with you and want to follow your stuff and want to see what you're doing. You can put your questions out just to your network, right? And I've, I'm doing that practice a little bit more and just asking people's opinions on things or asking people's feedback or like putting out open calls to say like, I, I know I did a post a while back where I was just like, hey, I finished this project and I just want feedback, right? I never really had like a formalized code review from like a senior on a big project, but um, anybody out there want to hop on a call with me and just look at this thing and, and just rip it apart with me and just give me anything, any advice that you have about this whole project. And people volunteered and they said, hey, yeah, I'll help you out. Let's schedule a time. And I think I did like, I don't know, six or seven of those conversations and everybody gave me different, unique feedback. And it was a super awesome experience to have. So over time, if you have that network of folks that are out there that are seeing what you do, like, don't be afraid to just mass message out. I don't think anybody's going to come back to be like, you don't know what you're doing. Just leave us all alone. Like people are, mm. the, the good people out there are going to come and want to help you out and want to help you develop. Absolutely, man. There's, there's, a, there's an incredible uh, power in community, man. Uh, you know that i think like with me doing a podcast it's not like me having these so-called numbers and so-called views it's more so of just the people i've met that's been like the uh the most important thing uh you don't you don't realize how how like generous a lot of people are especially in coding uh there's so much stuff that's free like 
literally your whole tool chain can be free. Um, your whole education is free. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't know any other community that gives like so much free stuff. Like there's so much generosity in this community. It's really just uh, being brave enough to step out and, and reach out. But yeah, I think that's uh, all the questions I have for you. Do you have any questions for me? Ooh, all right. I can I can turn it out here. Um, well, first of all, Kevin, it's been cool getting to know you over the past like couple of weeks, right? In our in our conversation, and thank you for guesting on self taught devs a while back. Um, I would love to hear your perspective on what you look for in junior developers, right? Because mm -hmm. We've had a little bit of that conversation, right? Of like, how do I show somebody that I'm ready? How do I go out there and improve to somebody that I can do this job? What what would be like your ideal junior developer, right? Let's say like, give me a version that is um, language agnostic, right? Because yeah, I want this person to have some technical skills. We're gonna we're, we know that's necessary. What are you looking for in soft skills with people? Sure. So, um, I would say. The big thing is uh, you have to be someone that um, is is willing to learn. Like a lot of, you know, a lot of people, they act like they know it all. So, um, you know, just because someone is a senior doesn't mean that they're right. But, um, you know, somebody who's been in the industry a long time, they kind of uh, know, you know, the, the pitfalls and this and that. They have a perspective that, you know, someone who's more junior, they may not have. So you know having somebody who's who's willing to listen like uh hey what do you think on this issue and you know this is this might be contrary to what a lot of juniors think um there's nothing wrong with uh, uh defending your position like if you're right because you know right is right and wrong is wrong uh the, the amount of years doesn't really matter so you know being able to stand uh on your viewpoint and defend it respectfully like hey this is why i did this uh what do you think about that like it's just really uh communicating respectfully like none of us like you mentioned before you made a, a a good point like we're here to solve a problem and we're doing it together you know what i mean it's not it's not about me putting my solution or you putting your solution um it's all about hey let's 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 find the best solution and you know we're not we're, we're never nobody's ever 100 percent right nobody always has the best answer so you know, as a junior, just being able to talk to a junior, get into his mind or her mind. And, you know, they should be able to contribute on the conversation as well. Like, what do, what do you think about this problem? How would you go about solving this problem? And then, you know, you're, you're, you're able, even if you don't have the experience, you should be able to at least like attempt an answer. Mm -hmm. um, I would say another thing is it's always important to showcase that uh, you love to learn because this is a learning industry. Like um, you, you, you don't want to be like, oh, I'm just here. I'm gonna do my job and I clock out. Like, you know, you you can talk about the passion you have some for for some of the projects you've done outside work. Like, hey, I made this Connect Four. You know, I learned X, Y, and Z. Like, I think that that would be something to really uh, focus on on your LinkedIn profile and your resume. Um, I talked with Diego. Um, he's a recruiter. And, you know, one thing he mentioned is like he really wants to see like people flesh out what they're doing and how it how it's going to bring value to a business. Like, uh, I believe a mistake a lot of people make is they look at their LinkedIn and resume as kind of like a who's who, a chronological thing of everything I've done, whereas it's more so like an advertisement for what you want to get. Right. Like, um mcdonald's they don't say you know ray Kroc started this in xyz when they're trying to sell you a hamburger they show you a, a a delicious picture of a hamburger and you know they put all these descriptive adjectives so the, what, what sells sizzle to hiring managers and you know just other developers is you really elaborating on what you're doing and how that's solving the problem so you know for example uh say you have a problem i mean a project where um you did unit tests on your resume you said on x x project i wanted to ensure that it's thoroughly testable and that somebody can come in and work on this after me therefore i made sure to get 80 percent test coverage because you know stuff like that that showcases that you're ready to come in and you're ready to contribute that's that's really what looks impressive mm -hmm.
Yeah, you're a product, right? You are the product you are trying to sell to exactly. the, the potential employers out there. So do your do your best and build your brand and, and make sure you are uh, recognizable, not for what you have done, but what for your, your potential is to do and the things that you know you're capable of doing and what you can promise that you can do in that position you're trying to get. Exactly. That, that's, that's something that everybody needs to start thinking about. We're all brands. Like a lot of people just, you know, especially as engineers, we just want to come in, solve the problem and go home. But uh, especially in the age where it's increasingly more saturated, mm -hmm. we have to realize we're products, you know, um, and the co co companies are looking to buy. What makes you there's like 10,000 sodas on when you go to a grocery store. What makes you pick one above the other? Like a lot of times it's familiarity and that fami familiarity is spread through great marketing. Like it has mm -hmm. a beautiful packaging, you know, um, you've heard, you, you've seen the reviews, uh, it's like word of mouth, stuff like that. So, you know, being really involved in a LinkedIn community and people saying, Hey, this guy's good, you know, that's going to start spreading. Um, and it's even things like, you know, you put out the YouTube video, you're showcasing your personality. Like, I think uh, uh, this is something that I have to had I had to come to terms with myself is that um, a lot of the work you put in is like planting a tree. You know, you're mm -hmm. not going to get the fruit the next day. Um, you just have to learn to love the process. Like me and Terrence, we've been doing a podcast for over a year. And for that first year, we were getting zero views, one views etc but each episode we you know we're, we're looking for things to improve we're looking for ways to get better and it's, it's sort of like that with uh, a junior trying to find a job like all of the networking you're doing you're not gonna like one day later you know have 50 guys in your inbox say hey come work for me but they see you on linkedin every day talking about code they see you posting videos they see you actively engaged it's, it's slowly going to build your following and build your visibility and people see that you're competent and that's really what's going to make you stand out like hey who is this guy uh why why isn't he working at our company let me reach out to him so yeah man this is marketing and branding is something that we all have to take serious like mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of people that can essentially do the same thing they can all do the job so what's going to make one guy stand out versus the next yeah. and that's really how seriously you take their brand people hire people Right. They don't hire right. a piece of paper that says you can do a job. They hire a person. So how do you show somebody who you are? Exactly. So uh, you, you, did you have any uh, other questions? Oh, man, this has been fun. I, I've enjoyed uh, being on here with you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And yet all the recruiters, anybody who's looking to hire, man, you got to get this guy on your team. So uh, where, where can where can people find you at? Uh, the probably the easiest place to find everything that I'm doing is my portfolio is ericwink.dev, E R I C W I N K dot dev. Uh, that has my links out to LinkedIn. You can find the podcast from there, Self Taught Devs. Uh, most active on LinkedIn. So find me there and follow my posts and reach out to me. Uh, I'm, I'm open to talk to anybody and have some fun conversations. Oh, man, I definitely appreciate you for stopping by. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll catch y'all next time.